If you're anything like me, then you literally cannot function without a cup of coffee. I saw a meme the other day that said if I didn't have coffee, I'd probably have like 25 to life, and that's gotta be the most real thing that I've seen in a long time. But despite the fact that folks all over the globe flock to this delectable little bean juice, not a whole lot of people know where it comes from. In much the same way, Kydex holsters are essentially a staple of the EDC community. It seems that virtually everyone has some sort of Kydex holster of some sort for their gun, but the question still remains. What exactly is Kydex? Where did it come from? And more importantly, what makes it so special? My name is Dustin with We The People Holsters and in today's video, we're gonna be diving into the history and explain what makes Kydex just so special and more importantly, find out just exactly what the hell it is. Let's get into it. Kydex Holsters. Kydex. 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 Now, as we get into talking about somewhat of a mystery material, if you would, it would basically be illegal for me not to mention here that if you're looking for a Kydex holster for your carry gun, then you gotta look no further than wethepeopleholsters.com. We're talking IWB, OWB, black, gray, teal, printed, We The People logos, it's pretty awesome, with optics, without optics, with lights, with lights and optics, chances are we have a holster for you. Plus, if you like to appendix carry, we have this super cool little thing that we like to call the claw, you know, like the thing that, you know, as a kid, but it's different, right? Just hear me out. It basically keeps your carry gun against your body so you don't print when you're out and about because after all, it wouldn't be concealed carry if you announced to the whole world that you have a gun. Check it out, wethepeopleholsters.com. All right, into the video. I itch my face. The story of Kydex starts way back in 1904 with a guy by the name of Otto Rome. Otto is, at the time, working as an analytical chemist at the Stuttgart Gas Works Company. Unhappy with his job, Otto was looking for his next big break. He found that on a walk home from his job, he noticed that the local tannery smelled a lot like the smell of the gas water coming from the gas works plant that he was employed at. Otto wondered if he could use those same chemicals that they were using at the gas works plant to soften leather, so he would set out to make this happen. Fun fact for you here, did you know that in the early 1900s, in order to bat leathers or remove the organic compounds from the hides, such as hair and other, uh, again, organic compounds, right? Tanners were using fermented dog feces. Yeah. You heard that right. Not only was this disgusting, but it was also extremely inconsistent as obviously fecal material is less than, well, you know what, never mind. We're moving on, right? By 1906, Rome had developed a solution of gas, water, and salts that appeared to soften the leather as well or better than previous methods. He then wrote a letter to his friend in America who was also by the name of Otto. No, for real. His name was Otto Haas, right? So apparently Otto was like the Noah of the early 1900s. It seems everyone just named their kid that. So Otto and Otto set out to make this product work and they did just that. Over the next three decades, they would continue to innovate, engineer, and create products until 1935 when they experienced their next big breakthrough by accidentally creating this little product that you may or may not have heard of, plexiglass. Apparently the story here goes that one of the employees was experimenting with ways to bond together two sheets of glass, right? They were trying to take two pieces and stick them together so they would stay and obviously be clear. Now, instead of acting as an adhesive, however, when the bonding agent dried, it actually made a perfectly clear, lightweight plastic sheet. It would be another several years until plexiglass took off. However, this product would propel them through the next few decades. We're talking close to 30 years here, keeping them busy during the world wars and beyond. But how does all this tie into Kydex in the first place? Well, it is a bit of a mystery where or why Kydex was invented. What's important to note is by the mid 1960s, the Roman Haas company had figured out that Kydex could be molded into pretty much any shape simply by adding heat to the material, molding it to what you want it to look like, and then letting it cool. It was a pretty simple process. This breakthrough was especially critical for the aerospace industry, which used Kydex to create various panels on airplanes. One of the most notable is the overhead storage bins. Those are made of Kydex. Once this breakthrough occurred, it was off to the races for the old Kydex. The more folks used Kydex, the more they liked it. It was chemical resistant, it held shape well even under some pressure, and it even was water repellent. 
All of this adds up to be a nearly perfect recipe for making holsters. Now, it's not all rainbows and unicorns when it comes to Kydex holsters though. Perhaps one of the biggest inconsistencies when it comes to Kydex is that not all Kydex is created equally, right? Kydex is essentially a brand name. It's a lot like Kleenex, right? Which is a brand of facial tissues. Because of this, much in the same way, there are some brands that are using a more generic and sometimes lower quality thermoplastic material that they call Kydex. This leads to inconsistencies within the product, poor product performance, and overall, just a less than stellar experience. That's why here at We The People Holsters, we only use authentic Kydex branded material, giving you the best possible material for your holster and note. It's just that simple, folks. With that being said though, when compared to a leather holster, Kydex offers a few advantages. For starters, it's typically going to be a lot cheaper than some of those leather counterparts. Additionally, Kydex is gonna be sweat and weather resistant, meaning that if you're in a warmer climate, it's not gonna get gross after sitting in your waistband all day, because let's be real, it gets hot sometimes. If you're like me, you might get a little sweaty. It's gross. It's as simple as opening up the box and wham, bam, you're ready to go with your Kydex holster. Just slide your handgun in there. Good to go. Now, regardless of how it was formed, one thing is for sure here, Kydex is gonna be a solid option if you're looking for a dependable holster that won't break the bank. What's your favorite carry position? Let us know in the comments down below, and as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. With that, my name is Dustin, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay free, friends.